What's going on guys, Roadnut44 back with you again for another scenery tutorial for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, this one I have briefly covered in a couple of other tutorials, but I have had a couple of requests to go a little bit more in detail on this and to do a dedicated video on it. And pretty much this is a video on how do you make an object library for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So an object library can be used for shared assets between packages. So let's say you have, you know, four different sceneries you create, you have an object that is shared between those four different sceneries. Well, the smart thing to do is to put it in an object library package. That way it's using one single object with all of its textures under a single GID string. That means that all four packages reference this one model instead of having to put this single model and its accompanying textures into all four packages. So not only does it help save space, but it just helps simplify your workflow so much more. And it has the added benefit of if you ever update these models, of course they get updated over all of your scenery add-ons. So how do you make an object library for Microsoft Flight Simulator? Well, it's not as hard as you think. It's actually really simple. So first and foremost, this tutorial is starting off as if you have already completed your model you've exported the GLTF from Blender and it's also got some knowledge required and how to set up a project for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now if you're not very familiar with how to do that I have a really in-depth tutorial video on this it's called how do you set up a scenery project I'll uh, put a little pop-up in the top right corner here it'll also be linked down in the description below so if you want some more in-depth information on that covering kind of the basics of what you need to set up for scenery project and the uh, or a Microsoft Flight Simulator project. Check that video out. All right, guys, so the folder that we have in front of us is a project folder for an object library I made here a while back. It is a picnic table. The model was made in Blender and painted in Substance Painter. I have an export folder in here which contains the uh, GLTF file. This is where I exported everything out to. So once you export your package with Blender, 3ds Max, whatever you're deciding to use, most likely Blender, um, you're going to have a bin file, a GLTF, and an XML. That should all export when you export your GLTF. The XML, if we open this up, I don't think I have it open yet. Nope, I do not. With notepad. This is a very simple, single-level detail XML. So this tutorial here is not going to dive into setting up extra level details for your model. This is just a very simple basic how to build a package. So our model, single level detail, this text document, or sorry, XML document just contains the GID, which is what the, uh, basically what gets referenced when you place the object in the scenery. So this GID gets called in another XML file, and that's how it finds this model. So each one of these XMLs for your GLTF is going to have its own unique GID string. And typically that's going to be generated by your modeling program. If for whatever reason it's not, there's plenty of you know, free GID generators online. Just go out, generate one, slap it in there. You'll be good to go. <laughs> so anyways, now that we have these three files, quote unquote, exported, we're going to throw that off screen for a second. And we're going to bring up Microsoft Flight Simulator, throw her in the full screen mode here. And we have a project open. Now this video, of course, doesn't cover how to make this project. If you want more information on that, go ahead and check out my How Do You Set Up a Scenery Project video that I mentioned before, as that covers all of this. And it's also got some sample files that you can you know, open up and kind of reference if you'd like to. But... Anyways, this is just a blank project. There is nothing under here, so we need to add an object library. To do that, we're going to break open the inspector window. So if you do not have that open, go to the, pro the uh, project editor window, hit view, check off inspector so that this window here comes up. It's going to look just like this, most likely. Obviously, there's not going to be text filled in if you're creating a new project. But we're not too worried about that just yet. Down here at the bottom, you're going to hit Add Asset Group. Go ahead and, although you have these wizard options over here, hit Custom. Next. In this drop down, you're going to scroll all the way down. Well, you shouldn't actually have to scroll down. I guess it's at the bottom of the list. 
but hit model lib. And then you can really name this whatever you want. This is just for reference. So, uh, I don't know, let's, what I use in my previous tutorial, I think uh, P-A-T-K is what I used. P-A-T-K underscore model lib. Oops, model lib. Typos, typos, typos. Then we're going to go ahead and hit create. Now, underneath this drop down menu, we'll have a model lib created, and we have named that PATK underscore model lib. However, this is not what the BGL is going to be called. So, the wizard has automatically generated a package in our scenery directory or in our project directory. However, this is not what we want to use, all right? So go ahead and click over here in the inspector window, asset directory, open up that asset directory path. It should have already thrown you in your project as long as you've already opened the project. We're going to go into package sources. It's going to create the scenery add-on name, blah, 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 in here. We don't need that. Delete it. Get rid of it, okay? Create a new folder. And then whatever you want your... Um, object library BGL to be called is what we are going to name this folder. And this is something else I cover in another one of my videos, Two Common Scenery Mistakes. So after you watch this video, if you haven't, I'd highly recommend checking that out. It's going to be a little redundant on this part, but there's also another good tip in there for uh, material libraries as well. And those are two things that you're not going to want to mess up on. Um, so anyways, back on topic here. We're going to rena rename this to PATK underscore uh, model lib. And as I said, whatever this is called is what your BGL is going to be called. So once this package is compiled, the BGL containing all your models is going to be called PATK underscore model lib dot BGL. And that... Uh, you just want to make sure that's named uniquely, you know, so you don't cause any conflicts. Once we get that named, we're going to jump inside of that folder. Hit select folder down here at the bottom. It's going to update with a uh, relative path here. Then for the output directory, we want to leave this starting with scenery. Um, in the past, we've used scenery world backslash scenery. However, I have changed this up recently. I used to use this method, but I got to thinking that maybe, just maybe, there could be some potential for conflict there um, if you're not using uniquely filed names or uniquely named files. <laughs> so I've changed this up. I'm now doing scenery, my company name, which is Emerald Scenery Design, so ESD, and then I use the name or the ICO or identifier of my airport. So scenery, my company name, your username, whatever you want to use, then the uh, the airport name. This is what Zobo is currently using and, and Microsoft are currently using for their add-on scenery packages. So I'm kind of just falling into that trend of wanting to use that. It seems like the right thing to do. It seems like the right structure as compared to what we were told previously, which was the world and global slash scenery. Um, so that's what I've been doing, and I haven't had any ill effects with it, and it seems to be working pretty good. The main thing here is just make sure that it begins with scenery. After that, you can put whatever you want. So scenery slash or backslash PATK would even work in this case. But for now, this is what we're going to use. All right, so now that we got that saved, or got that created, we're going to hit save under project here. Then we can go over and open up that directory. Let's go ahead and get this simplified. Let's get rid of the flight simulator window so it's not all distracting in the background. So this is inside of the package that we have generated. So inside of package sources, we have the folder we just created. Now inside of this folder, we're going to want to create a folder called Texture. Obviously, this is where we're going to put all of our PNG textures for our models. I'm going to go ahead and create another folder in here. We're going to call it, uh, let's say, ESD 
I like to have kind of naming conventions for all my files. So pick the table would be like a clutter object. So clutter, CLU, table, pick, pick, uh, picnic. I think that's how you spell picnic. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. So then we're going to open that up. I'm going to copy our GLTF files here. So I got them highlighted, bin, GLTF, XML. Copy those and go ahead and paste them inside of this folder. Now, I can go over here and I can find, let's see if I can find something. Uh, what do I have that has level of detail on it? All right, sorry for the break there. Had to find the file that had the level of details in it. So this is what it would look like if you had a GLTF exported with separate levels of detail. All the levels detail are going to be in the single folder as well as a single XML file, which is going to define all of them. Open with Notepad, we can take a look in here, and we see that we now have a opening and closing level details tag, or LODS, as well as a single self-closing level detail tag within each of these, which defines a minimum size, which this is... I believe in Microsoft Flight Simulator, don't quote me on this, but as far as my understanding goes, this is relating to percentage of screen size. So however much of a percentage that object is, or however much, yeah, however much of a percentage that object takes up on your screen, whatever resolution screen you have, that's when this level of detail change is going to happen. So this would be like pretty close to 20%. It's got a bunch of weird decimal places because this was made in a model converter X, <laughs> but uh, which uses a different setup for level of detail. Then also you have model file equals, then the name of each single GLTF file. So that's what it would look like if you had multiple level details in your XML here. Switching back to our other project, we don't need that one. Let's get rid of that. We have just a single level detail picnic table here. We've already placed our XML bin and GLTF inside of our folder that we created. We also have a texture folder. Of course, I don't have my textures <laughs> readily available. Textures, there we go. That's what I want. Copy and paste. All right, now we got our albedo, which is our plain like color texture. So we can open each one of these up so you can kind of see. So got our albedo texture. Next is going to be our comp texture, which is can be uh, very very pretty at times. <laughs> um, this is our combined uh, AO map, metallic map, and roughness map. So. Uh, ambient occlusion, AO map in the red channel, uh, roughness in the green channel, and metallic in the blue channel makes this nice, pretty, artistic color. <laughs> and then, of course, our normal map. So that's what a PBR texture setup would look like. Of course, if you're not using PBR textures, likely you're just going to have a single texture with all of your color data in it, as well as maybe a normal texture if you did a normal map for it. So that's pretty much it as far as files go. This is how we're going to shove it in there. Now we can jump back over to Microsoft Flight Simulator to compile this package. And let's go ahead and set up our project name here. So I'm going to say play ESD. And for good practice here, we're going to use, as we can see on this menu that pops up, it says for model libraries, use model lib dash name. So we're going to say ESD, well, A, the select all, model lib. And uh, you can, I mean, whatever you want to name this, this doesn't really matter. Ideally, you're not going to be doing this for an airport. So let's just say model lib. You could even leave it as that, I guess. Just whatever your username is in the model lib. This this is your personal preference. I would just recommend having model lib in here so it denotes that it is a model library. We're going to go ahead and put in a title here, whatever we want. So um, I'm just going to say 
ESD model model libraries. Like I said, this is all personal preference, and then company name. Emerald Scenery Design. Or if you want to put your username there, you can. This is just the creator of the package. Then we're going to make sure the content type is set to scenery. You can add a thumbnail if you wish. Highly recommend doing it. Just make sure it's 412 pixels by 170 pixels. And then all we have to do now, set a version at the top. If you want to add release notes, you can do that by clicking the plus button down here. And we'll add release notes, fill in all this data, blah, blah, blah. Go up the project, hit save, so everything is saved, and make sure we're clicked on this little bar here. So we have the build package option down here at the bottom. Then we're just going to hit build package, and Microsoft Flight Simulator is going to do its magic. Now we can see here, sometimes this, uh, this log file can get pretty dang cluttered. So it may be hard to determine when your project has finished building. But sometimes we'll see this finished, one skipped, seven done, zero failed. And if we bring over our projects folder, let's go ahead and get rid of Microsoft Flight Simulator again. And we back out to our main folder. We'll see that there has been two new folders generated in here, underscore package int and packages. Inside the packages folder. Uh, oh, crap. So that's something I probably should have explained. And obviously I failed to do it. <laughs> I don't know why they did this. Used to, you could hit, hit enter when you put in your um, information up here at the top. But now you have to hit this update package name box or button. So that's why our package got named the default name I had. So just make sure you hit this button afterwards and it'll be fine. But anyways, doesn't matter for this. We can open that up. We'll see we now have a scenery folder in here, layout JSON, manifest JSON, and usually as long as we have these two JSON files in there, the project is good to go. But we're going to go ahead and go in here, open up that folder, open up that folder, and we can see that we now have a BGL file in here, patk underscore model lib dot BGL, as well as a texture folder where all of our textures have been um, compiled in DDS texture format as well as an accompanying JSON file for each texture. So basically all we need to do at this point is take this package here, initials dash add-on dash name, obviously named something completely different for you, copy it, and we're going to put this into our community package. So just like you would install any other add-on. Anyways, guys, this has been a lot longer of a tutorial than I thought it'd be. But anyways, we got through it, <laughs> and hopefully it's been a wealth of knowledge for you guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Like the video, and if you find anybody that's struggling with this topic, share this video to them as well. Help them out. Anyways, guys, thanks for following along. Have a great rest of your day. Rodenut44, over and out.